team is Sasha Pinkett. cousins, cousins, boyfriends, grandparents, a great aunt, a couple of friends. Uh, all in all, it was like 20 people, which is a lot to coordinate, which is why we settled on a cruise. Uh, we needed a safe place for three generations to come together and congregate, so we figured like a floating hotel that's pushed off into the Atlantic was our best bet. Um, we had a lot going on at the time, you know, it was a lot bringing us together. My cousin was turning 30, which I think a lot of us can understand is something that you should seize before it seizes you. Uh, my uncle, or sorry, my papa, she shares her birthday with him, he was turning more 80. <laughs> and then we were also celebrating two victories with two separate battles of cancer, with cancer. So there was a lot of joy and also a lot of steam to blow off. I was also particularly excited in my own life. It had just started to occur to me that the foundation of my life was like eroding away sort of slowly and all it was. Um, so it was kind of, uh, I think I, oh, I should explain. <laughs> um, I had broken up with a boyfriend of four years and abandoned the job as a copywriter. And I had moved for like the millionth time to an even shittier apartment and started waiting tables. I'd gone back to school, not for a degree, but with a dream that was rapidly dying in the hands of teachers who just didn't care. Uh, so it was a perfect time to jet off and sort of cheers to the health and happiness of my overall family instead. Um, and there are a lot of fun stories from that trip, really a ridiculous time. But the one I wanna tell you is really from the first leg of the journey home. So my brother and I had similar flight times. We shared a lift to the airport and you know, Dennis arrived in his little white Nissan Altima and we hugged everyone goodbye and set off. I'm so scared. Uh, <laughs> so we set off. Um, I should mention that I'm in this moment too, an anxious person. I'm much more anxious than my brother. Uh, he's super comfortable to just sit in silence if need be, but I get really squirmy. So Dennis started in with a small chat and I took over with that and let Dylan just sort of like stare blissfully out the window. And um, you know, I'm not great with silence, but I'm also not great with small talk. Um, I have like a lot of preferences, um, but small talk always feels forced and clumsy and I feel like I'm asking the wrong questions or I'm answering the ones presented to me with too much honesty. Like that's a big problem for me. But for a few minutes, it was fine. Um, I have worked a lot of service jobs and I've also driven for Lyft for a little bit, so it was super easy to just fall into a conversation about like what GPS apps we prefer and all the lunatics we've interacted with. Um, and it, you know, it was a beautiful day and I just spent the last three days with these like matching yellow baseball caps. We were abusing, totally abusing the unlimited drink package and singing a lot of karaoke. So I was fine and I was like killing it with the small talk and fine, totally fine. And then Dennis said, uh, he's always wary, you know, when he drives around young women alone in his car because of the whole cry wolf situation. And as he said that, I was suddenly, that case, not <laughs> fine at all. Um, it was like really shocking though, because it was so sudden. You know, it was like walking into a deli and ordering a, I don't know, an everything bagel with cream cheese. And then instead of asking you if you'd like that toasted, he, the cashier just leans forward and punches you in the mouth instead. And you know, so you're in like a lot of pain. You're supposed to laugh at that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, but okay, so you're in a lot of pain and you only kind of understand why. And you're not, you're so shocked that you're not sure if there's like a good way to respond. In that situation, it might occur to you to like call the police or leave. But in this moment, I'm acutely aware that no crime has been committed. And also I'm super trapped in the backseat of Dennis's Nissan. So, 
freaking out, freaking proud. And, you know, to add insult to injury, what had before smelled like clean cotton, he had this great little, like, Yankee candle clip on. Um, all of a sudden, it didn't smell like cotton anymore. It smelled bad. It smelled real bad. And as I realized that, I understood that it smelled bad because of me, which is the worst feeling, because stress is my nemesis. Always, literally always, but lately it's been winning, you know? So I think it's because there's all this talk about weak, whiny, snowflake millennials, and they gotta put their feelings away, and I usually eat that shit up with like a big spoon. But in this moment, I was also just like sweating it right back out. You know, it felt like I had to vomit, but then it was seeping out of my pores instead, because the thing, yeah, it's a visual. Um, the thing was for me that I was sexually assaulted by someone I loved for several years as a child. I know everyone goes for the fire. Um, that is the most concise way to, you know, speak my truth. But I'm learning that short is not always sweet and less is not always more. And silence doesn't always mean strength. I learned that when I was 13. Uh, a friend of mine hyped me up to call the person who'd been abusing me. She was like, you deserve answers or closure or whatever 13 year olds say to each other. And I was like, you're right. And I called him and he said he remembered none of it. And that sh like shook me to my core. That absolutely rocked my sense of reality. So I just froze up and she in my frozen state took the phone and laid into him till he hung up. And from that point in my mind, that part of my life and that side of my family is just disintegrated. And it still feels like that's my fault. I know it's not, I've learned better. I know better now. But if you don't air that out like right away, it gets baked in. So now I feel it in my bones and my teeth when I'm like hashtag triggered and trying not to be. Uh, my skin itches or my hair, my scalp tightens, like every hair is like a little too wide for the hole it's growing out of or I twitch, or my hands seize, or sometimes my knees give out and I'll fall over. Um, I dropped in a mall once. My brother, he caught me with a linked arm just in time, just before I hit the ground and then we walked it off like those, um, like the strong men from that show, American Dad. You know, we did the like steak and eggs and eggs <laughs> and steak. Um, and so, you know, sometimes you can make a great little bit and people pass it off, but in, in other times you're just, stinking up some guy's car. Um, but my brother still came to the rescue. He was so good. He knew right away that something was not good, aside from it smelling not good. Um, and so he took over the small talk, bless, and I focused on like stone facing it out the window and not being a millennial. And it just occurred to me that I wasn't gonna be able to do that for much longer. You know, because it was occurring to me that as soon as the car stopped, I was gonna have to go back to my mess of a life, like this total disaster. And so I just said something. I started by asking the driver for his name again. I had to do it twice because the first time it came out like a little sweet and he didn't hear it. So I had to say, Dennis, Dennis. <laughs> uh, I said, I'm not trying to blow up your day, but also you said something before and it's killing me. Uh, I said, nationwide, 98, you gotta start with the stats because it's easier. I said, nationwide, 98% of accusers are telling the truth. And also, or I guess in general, so that cry wolf mentality is like barely valid and shut up. Um, but you know, for me, I said, as someone who's experienced this, it is so hurtful to have to hear and sit with because I know exactly how much it sucks to have to call that kind of attention to yourself. And then there was a really long pause. And just as I was starting to consider just like opening the door and hurling myself into traffic, he said, oh, my wife is gonna kill me. And I was like, I don't know what to do with that. Like I saw his eyes widen in the rear view mirror and was like, oh, I don't, he's gonna kill us all or what, oh boy. And he was just like, she's telling me all the time, I'm such an asshole and I talk so much and I say the wrong thing, I said the wrong thing, I didn't mean to hurt you, ah. And I almost laughed, I think I did, you know, cause I was so relieved and so shocked and so amused. I was so happy to see this person being a person. And we talked for the next 10 to 15 minutes. When we got to the airport, he got out of the car and he helped me with my bags. I put my hand out and he shook it. And then we both said, thank you. I said, thank you for listening. And he said, thank you for talking to me. And I was like, great, bye. Um, so we went on with our lives. But then the second wave, we go inside and I'm realizing like I had just been like a little skunk and sort of like my brother was totally caught in the fire of that like ah, i'm so sorry like literally it was stinky in there and also like you just had to deal with a lot of my feelings and i want to protect you um so i didn't say anything 
and we got closer to security and he's not saying anything and I'm not saying anything. And then the silence broke and he said, I think you handled that really well. And I realized in that moment that my voice had been heard and my family wasn't broken. And in these days, like neither am I. that are lots of things that people talk about in therapy. But what people, uh, what I love that she shared that most people don't talk about is stress sweat. 